Every city thinks it is unique, but they're not. They're all fundamentally the same. We all have the same ordinances, the same building codes, the same road standards, and we all financed our growth in the same way. And so, we are all fragile in the same way too. At the same time, everywhere. I'm not here saying what everybody else is saying. You know, how big is the tax increase going to be and who's going to pay for it? How deep is the service cut going to be and where is it going to be felt? It's critical that we see the third variable at play. The third variable being the current pattern of development. As long as we continue to build in a way that gives us short-term growth today, but massive obligations in the future, there's no way that our cities are going to avoid bankruptcy. We have had decades of the most robust growth any society has ever experienced, and we're still not wealthy. The problem is that the growth is creating these enormous long-term obligations. The way we're growing, the way we're building our places, long-term does not make any financial sense. We need to have a conversation, not about growth, but about productive growth. About ways of experiencing growth that actually makes us wealthier over time. Building productive places is not rocket science. In fact, for generations, regular people without master's degrees or zoning codes built spectacular places. How did they do it? It's simple. They just copied what they knew and understood. They built great cities and towns bit by bit, slow and steady over time. Our question then becomes, what incremental steps and small investments can we make today? What does productive growth look like in a 21st century city? We have toured the continent exploring these questions and the problems that led us to them. We have to change because our cities can no longer maintain themselves. But that change does not have to be scary. The main determinant of future prosperity for cities will be the ability of local leaders to transform their communities.